But like I gotta say, I enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed, NXT War Games. It had two War Games matches, one title match, and strap match, and I guess a grudge match. The War Games, uh, female War Games, the, the women's War Games, opened up the event. Plenty of highlights. One that I liked was when Io Shirai, after battling to get in, because they couldn't start the match without her, she was the last one to enter, and they kept and pretty smart on, the, uh, on her opponents, keeping her outside the ring so that the match wouldn't start and they could just continue to be on Shotzi's team. But then Io goes to the top of the cage, puts the trash can over her head, Usually someone does that to you, but she did it herself, and she dived onto everybody in the ring, taking them out. This was a very physical match, and could have easily been the main event. It wasn't. It opened the show, and I guess you wanted to do that to set the pace. Uh, but in the end, even though a lot of physicality, just a lot of brutality in this match, it surprises you because it's the women. Then again, it shouldn't surprise you because they can get physical just like the men. And Raquel Gonzalez is able to one hand slam, a choke slam, choke bomb, whatever you want to call that. And she drives the NXT Women's Champion through a ladder, breaking the ladder in half and getting the pin. So does this mean that she is going to be next in line? I don't see why not. I think it's time. I think that she has what it takes to Pretty much give Io Shirai one of the hardest uh, challenges of her title. So we'll see what happens with that. Then, let's talk about the strap match. Cameron Grimes, he comes in, and you know what he had, you know how he does it. He doesn't want to use the approved leather strap in the bag. He brings his own leather strap. Refs like to, uh, Loomis, are you cool with it? And then, they say, hey, it's cool. Grimes comes in, he starts, you know, gets a jump on Loomis, beats on him, he tries to get the advantage on him. Loomis does come back, gets in some offense, pretty much beating and battering him all over, you know, the Capitol Center. He even tries to jump the cage like he did on one of the uh, past NXTs, right? Try to get out of there. And then he. Brings him down the hard way, pulling on the leather strap. I think you see, you see that a couple times in this uh, match where someone was trying to get an offensive move in, and all the guy did, the opponent did, was just pull the rope and made him, you know, Dexter Lumis tried to do a uh, flip off the top rope, trying to land on Grimes, but then he pulls him before he was even able to uh, set himself correctly, wanting to do a move, you know. But in the end, in the move called the silent, it's that. Uh, Submission hold that he slaps on his opponent. He taps uh, Cameron Grimes out. So Cameron Grimes is on the receiving end of a loss. And it makes uh, Dexter Loomis look strong. And yeah, I'm still a fan of uh, Cameron Grimes. And I really, really enjoyed the match. It was fun. It was a, it was this, uh, match where, you know, these guys got their licks in. They were able to use this leather strap to, you know, put some uh, welts on the back of their opponents. And it was a great match. I enjoyed it. Now, let's go to the Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher uh, grudge match. I guess I'm going to call it a grudge match because it's been brewing for the last number of weeks. Tommaso Ciampa kind of starts it during a, a lesson in the ring that Thatcher was giving. Tommaso Ciampa sits on the ringside, looking at the proceedings, kind of egging uh, Thatcher on, and then after Thatcher gives his lesson, whatever happened during that lesson, he gets into the ring, and he, you know, you see Thatcher saying, "Hey, man, I got no problem with you. I don't have a problem with you." You know, you know, the next uh, few weeks, you know, we get these uh, run-ins with each other, and then last week we saw what happened with Thatcher. Thatcher, uh, you know, put a guillotine on him. And, you know, didn't tap him out. He passed him out. He put him to sleep. He did it to Ciampa. 
so that really really set the tone of how the match would be for war games very very you know well done match these two really did not leave anything in the ring they took it to their opponents very physical very brutal a lot of submissions especially from Thatcher's uh, side he was trying to wear down Tommaso Ciampa Ciampa was able to get his own offense in he was able to also get some moves and he had that weird choke on uh, Thatcher and it looked like he could be close to getting a victory at that point and then we had some more uh, you know offense come in and they were continuing to try to get that victory but then uh, Willow's Bell by Ciampa on Thatcher secures the victory for Tommaso and he built some momentum he gets some uh, you know, momentum I'm on the side, and uh, I don't know if what he's what he's uh, playing is right now, but uh, this definitely is a way for him to start that, you know, build and that climb towards another title shot. And uh, I don't know, man, maybe he should go for the North American Championship. I think that's, that's the only title he hasn't gotten, right, in NXT. So uh, that should be his focus. Especially Donnie got the title now, so. Uh, We'll see about that, but I think I kind of went ahead. <laughs> Oops. But uh, let's talk about uh, that match. The uh, triple threat match for the North American title. And uh, it was a very, very good uh, match. Uh, Leon Ruff uh, kind of definitely proves that he belongs in this that division and that, you know, what did he say? I guess he just gave the mid card uh, in uh, NXT. He got knocked out. Well, he got taken out because uh, Damian Priest, uh, you know, slammed him into the barricade through the plate glass. Not plate glass, but that, you know, whatever you call that plastic uh, you know, window. <laughs> That's what you call it. And he goes through the barricade and that. And uh, the officials decided to take him out of the ring. They're back, and now it's only a one-on-one -on -one match. And it looked as though this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one match. But then Leon Ruff comes back. It's on offense. He does a dive off the top rope and taking out both uh, Priest and Organo. And then in the end, well, I already mentioned it. Gargano, Gargano hits the uh, one final beat, DDT, and pins Leon Ruff. Of course, we saw a ghost face. We actually saw six. We saw three at first. They get taken out by a priest, and then again, three more ghost face. And they get taken out by a priest. And then you got one more that hits uh, Damien Priest behind it, at the back of the head with a lead pipe. All legal because it's a triple threat match. No disqualifications. And with him knocked out, him taken out, uh, I said, uh, Johnny Gargano hit that DDT, that one final beat, and he secured victory and becomes the first ever three time North American champion. So it looks like the married couple, the Garganos, I guess it's going to be considered the first time that both uh, them, them are successful. In a, I mean, it would have worked better with the, with the title, right? It's uh, kind of story with a women's title. But their victory, they're victorious. They claimed they would be victorious. Uh, at, uh, NXT, so um, at NXT they, before they said that they were going to as they, as they were driving off at the at the screen screen with the you know uh, ghost face in the back, right? Where they're driving off. They claimed that proclaimed that they were going to be victorious, and they were. Good on them. Donnie is now the. Three-time North American champion. Let's see if he is able to defend his title successfully and break that curse of him not being able to defend his title whenever it's a first-time defense of a championship. Now let's do some uh, talk about some uh, some side things, things that uh, took place. Uh, Finn Balor, he cut a promo and he said that as soon as the war games, you know the cage is lifted you know that means that time for team sports is over 
and all eyes will return to him and NXT Championship beginning on Wednesday's NXT. Balor has been unable to defend the title due to facial injuries, you know, he suffered. But yeah, that was a chin, but I guess, you know, because he did say that he got three plates in there. And, and the brutal match with uh, Kyle O'Reilly, I mean, even Kyle O'Reilly was out for a bit because of that. But uh, he's going to be there on Wednesday, so hopefully he's going to talk and maybe he's going to give us an update on, 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 on the situation and if he's going to be coming back, if he's going to relinquish the title, or if he's going to defend the title. We'll see. And they have that they announced a pay-per-view uh, called New Year's Evil for January 6th. Very intriguing. I wonder what that's going to entail, what the theme is, what it's going to look like. I mean, New Year's Evil. It's got to be a scary, su- scary subject, right? <laughs> we'll see. But uh, that and also Karrion Cross. His presence was felt. The lights flickered, turned off. We see... You know, in a vignette, he shows, shows a vulture. And he's perched, waiting to strike. You know, just waiting, almost like you know, wait to take orders from uh, Carrie and Cross. But you hear the tick tock, tick tock from Carrie and Cross, and so this means that he's definitely on his way back. And there was reports that he is. Actually, ready to go. He, you know, of course we all know that he um, had that uh, injury at uh, when he defended his when he won the title actually from uh, Keith Lee at NXT one of the NXT takeovers and um, he had to relinquish the title because of an injury. He's back, and let's see what happens. Maybe he will make his impact uh, felt on uh, NXT coming just uh, Wednesday, or is. You know, he's, uh, he's going to challenge uh, Finn Balor. Could happen. There's some time before the uh, you know, next pay-per-view. But I mean the next uh, event for NXT. You know, December 6th, the New Year's Evil. That might be when he uh, tries to regain his uh, NXT championship. Now, the main event, that was the men's War Games event. And need I say, might I say, Pat McAfee has proven to be someone who is really ready, you know, prime time, if you will. This guy never ceases to amaze me on what he can do. He was so effing annoying when he was a commentator, when he would try to be funny and cute and everything like that, with his cute with his um, mannerisms and all that stuff, like trying to even try to get under the, under the, you know, you know, under the skin of like uh, Indisputed Era and other guys. And uh, he's really, really, this is his only second match, you know. And, and then when uh, TakeOver 31, he went against um, Adam Cole and he proved that he can go. And, uh, you know, but in this match, but it's like, it's all you expect, you know. Uh, you see Kyle O'Reilly and he done start off. And of course, they had five minutes in the ring before the next person would be brought into the ring. And then, as they were coming in, you know, it just got more physical, more brutal. For a while there, there was no toys, like, oh, like you know, like no ladders, no chairs, no tables and stuff. And then when McAfee came out, he's the one that, uh, you know, it was a cricket bat that was introduced by Danny Birch. But then here we see uh, uh, McAfee brings out these tables. Table for uh, you know strong written on the table with the, the with the you know the uh, undisputed era civil. You know, Roderick Strong, you got Fish, O'Reilly, Cole. Brought them all in the ring, setting them up, and you know that eventually every one of those uh, tables were going to be used. Uh, fortunately, in the beginning, it was the uh, Team McAfee that individually this, each of these guys were getting put through the tables. We see, you know, the one thing when they went to try to put it through one, one of the tables, uh, Birch was on, the, well, was on the table, and then they went and tried to slam Pete Dunn through, through 
reverse through the table, didn't break the first time. But that's because they were actually towards the, the side of the table. They weren't in the middle. And they did it again. And they were able to break the table. And we saw that happen through every, you know, one of those tables. So every table was uh, just destroyed. And then in the end, we see just every one of the Indisputed Era just going to town and delivering their signature moves. And Birch is, okay, Lorcan is, you know, flat on his back with a chair over his head, his face. And then Kyle O'Reilly does a dive off the top rope. And it's a you know a knee drop and pins uh Larkin and the Undisputed Era continues their dominance when it comes to war games and they get the victory and some payback over Team McAfee. And they just remained under flat on their back, they were out. See Lorcan uh, bleeding from the lip, bleeding from his eye, he got a cut above his eye. See uh, Pat McAfee gasping for, for air. I mean, there's just a lot of uh, great spots in this thing, in this match. And uh, do, do I think it's better than the women's? Uh, you know, to me, they're individually, individually their matches were something like separate from the other. Meaning, you know, you can't to compare this the men's match to the women's match yeah different approaches different uh types of spots in there that kind of made their matches individually great so i can't really say which one was better but like i said earlier i enjoyed the uh match i mean the event and uh you know it really doesn't, uh, it never ceases to amaze me. But the, the way the uh, NXT puts on the program, puts on an event like TakeOver. And uh, there's just so much to take in. And four matches, so uh, let's say two, like five matches, yeah. And then a couple of uh, vignettes and in between things. And you know, it's the way a pay per view should be. Not too many matches. Focus on individual matches and make them great and make them less than eight or nine or ten you know, like way w, you know the main event the main roster likes to always do 14 matches you know, 10 matches like you kind of lose the uh, momentum of a pay-per-view and you kind of get take people out of it it's too many to watch because you know that it's gonna suffer a lot of the you know extra matches are just gonna be filler you know, for four hour pay-per-view or something but uh, this was really great. I enjoyed it. Um, can't wait for the next one, which was uh, New Year's uh, Evil, uh, January 6th. That's going to be something right there. But anyway, that's my uh, that's my thoughts, my rundown, my review. The results of uh, NXT TakeOver War Games. And like, like I said, it was great. And can't wait for the next one. So those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.